helped um, find out uh, and help people with all the paperwork. Unfortunately, there is a lot of paperwork um, and this is just the way it is for any sort of quality assurance scheme or any um, disease control scheme. So let's get down and oops. So hopefully everyone's seen the first YouTube channel, a YouTube video on the new CAE map or market assurance program. So um, if you haven't, this is how you get to it. So you go to just search YouTube to, or Goat Vet Oz and you'll see it just here. And just click on it and it will uh, run for you. So I encourage people to get together because some people find the paperwork very jointing, uh, very daunting. And so that you'll need to um, need to get some support in order to get the paperwork done. And remember, it's better for you to have all the paperwork done before you call your vet out, because the vet's gonna charge by time. Oops, someone's just re emit someone. And so a lot of you will already be in the Biosecurity Queensland scheme uh, and you'll have a lot of certificates. Now, this is, you've been all, everyone's been informed because Biosecurity Queensland wrote to you and said they won't be continuing this, uh, their scheme. So people will lapse and they'll have to join the CAE market approved approve accreditation program and they will become automatically MN2 which stands for monitored negative twice. So instead of having a certificate uh, it'll all be online. So this is the current map for Yoni's disease in goats. So you just put in goat uh, you can put in alpaca or cattle or whatever. Um, you can search on status if you want to and the state and then just hit this search button. And then you'll see the people that are in the scheme. And if you want the certificate, you just click this button that says more information and it will bring up the certificate. Now, the certificate can be printed off. Uh, and this is what you'll have instead of the, um, the cardboard CAE uh, accreditation certificate. Okay, so I will just stress that it's really important that people join the scheme because purchased animals are the main method of introduction of any disease. So this is a case of Mady Visner in the UK just a week or so ago. Uh, this poor sheep farmer bought some new ewes um, the year before and uh, they, they lambed inside, so they're in close confinement with his other ewes. The Mady Visner spread. Mady Visner, for those that don't know, is the sheep type of uh, small ruminant lentivirus, which is now the name of the CAE virus. So very similar um, to CAE, so similar that they joined together now and given the one name. And he ended up having to cull 4,000 ewes because of lost production, thin wasting um, ewes, poor growth rates and high mortality in the ewes because he introduced this disease by buying in uh, a normal looking flock. Now there is no test that will tell if a baby kid is carrying either CAE or Yoni's. 
So the only protection you have is to buy young kids, if you're buying kids, to buy them from herds that are in accreditation schemes. So there's nothing you can do, there's no test that you can do to see if these kids are carriers. Now, everyone in Queensland has a general biosecurity obligation under the Biosecurity Act. And this means that you should have a biosecurity plan or biosecurity management plan in place that addresses your biosecurity risks and outlines the measures that um, you would um, need to manage those risks. And if you are a commercial farm, it's essential. If you are a biosecurity uh, entity, if you're registered and everyone that's got even one goat has got to register and be given a PIC number or property identification code. As soon as you have a PIC number, you can be audited by Livestock Production Insurance um, and they will audit you. And one of the things they'll check on the audit uh, is that you have a biosecurity plan. And so they've got a lot of resources on the website farmbiosecurity.com.au. They've got a lot of resources there, um, which actually um, will allow you to meet that livestock production assurance audit. But even if you click on goats and use this plan, it's not enough. You actually need this general biosecurity market assurance program plan. And that plus the CAE map are the two things you need that will replace the Biosecurity Queensland Accreditation Scheme. Now, the good thing about the new plan that new program or map is that any vet can do the forms. You just have to find a vet that's willing to sit down, read the um, manual, maybe do my um, look at my YouTube videos and do the forms. Previously, some of you I know have had ex difficulties finding people that are in the uh, accredited uh, veterinarian to do the Yoni's map because there's not many. Uh, to get on this list, you have to had to do a course online, had to pass an exam, and you have to pay a significant fee uh, to be an accredited veterinarian. But now any registered vet can do it. But this has a benefit. So when the, you get the vet out to do your map, you can also, uh, at the same time, get prescriptions uh, because you'll need prescriptions if the drug is not registered for goat treatments. A lot of people, a lot of my clients get bucolgesic uh, for use at disbudding or uh, for putting uh, rings on for castration. If you're using a drench, then you must have a prescription because all the you can't use the label dose rates, even some of the labels that have goats on them, the dose is too small. And so you've got to have a prescription to give it at the correct dose rate. Uh, and if you are, if you have a pick and you're chosen at random and each year they choose about 2,000 picks, I forget the correct number, but it's about that, across Australia to get audited. And I've been called out at short notice to go and visit and write prescriptions um, for people that are going to be audited next week for an LPA audit. So you've got to have these prescriptions and have them on file. So the basic requirements of the biosecurity plan for that, the animals must be permanently identified. So um, this means either tattooed, or an ear tag, or both. You must have the basic information, it's like you must have a pick, name and address, etc. You can apply for an exemption for the BART database if you wish. And you must have the basic biosecurity plan and you must have an agreement, but it can be with any vet. 
Now, a lot of you may have forgotten that under the old Biosecurity Queensland scheme, you actually did do a lot of this. The original inspection by the vet, uh, they inspected the fences, the facilities, gave details of the herd composition and management, and you had to attach a property plan. So um, a lot of people with the renewal didn't bother with that, but it, you know, basically you're repeating what was required under the Biosecurity Queensland system. So the, the vet must do a property risk assessment. So the vet must look at the boundary fences and the internal barriers, the goat handling facilities, whether there's any feral animals, because um, feral animals uh, can spread disease um, and mainly yonis. But, um, you know, you can have feral goats, they can jump in. And even though the surveys of ferals done admittedly many decades ago now showed no CAE in ferals, we have found CAE in feral goats kept with dairy goats. So you must also, the vet must also look at the animals and activities in neighbouring properties. I've refused to um, allow a goat herd to join the uh, Yoni's Market Assurance Program because their uphill neighbour was dealing in cattle. And every time it rained, unfortunately, the, the road um, allowed the um, runoff from the top neighbour onto the goat farm. And so that uh, manure was um, potentially reaching the goat farm. So the owner was having a fight with the council to try and get that stopped because it came across the road. You have to look at the sites of potential contaminated water or faeces that could enter. But those that are on creek flats and you have a dairy cattle farm uphill, uh, up the stream, then you really have to think about uh, fencing off the creek flats and also look at the previous use of the land. Now, these are the forms that are on the Animal Health Australia website. So not all the forms are compulsory. but there are five forms that are. So we can uh, look at, we can look at the forms and I'll do these top two last because they're not needed until you do the 12 month review. So let's have a look at the forms. And if you brought the forms along, you might get some ideas to help you fill them out. So the first one here, um, just move this down, is the property and herd risk assessment. So you fill out the top with your name, property name, your pick number, the address, and then the current herd status. So if you're in the Biosecurity Queensland scheme, you will tick this box. If you're not in any scheme, you'll tick the non-assessed. So what you've got to have is that you've got to have a, the goat map manual. You've got to say how many numbers of blocks in the property. You must have a map and the vet must say if the yards are adequate. The vet then comments on the boundary fence and the internal fences. So... You know, there'll be a comment like ring lock, well-strained, two top arms. I use photos all the time for my risk assessments. Um, location of any fencing that requires upgrades. So it's pretty, that's a pretty basic, that's page one. Oops. So, and then that's uh, the next one. You've got to talk about the neighbours. 
So hopefully your neighbours only have horses and not goats or alpacas or cattle. If they do, then you'll have to look closely at those boundary fences and how likely it is any of the manure from the cattle, alpacas, are going uh, to get into your goat property. Um, so you might think about having a double fence with a row of trees, or you might put an electric outrigger, um, just so there's no nose-to-nose -nose contact or any manure getting through. So the regional prevalence of the disease. So in Victoria, they do uh, reports. So that's easily done. And in Victoria, but only Victoria, is CAE notifiable. But I've seen CAE and Yonis in Southeast Queensland in dairy goats. You also need to have uh, identify any higher risk neighbours. And there is a form letter that you can use uh, that you can notify your neighbours that you are in the market assurance program. Then you look at roads and stock routes. So um, if there is a stock route, then you must um, make sure that uh, your either you move your animals before any travelling stock come past or put in a double fence or an electric outrigger. Then look at the water flows and the potential for environmental transfer, more related to yonis rather than CAE. Um, any barriers that you can put in. So maybe fence off a river flat. Oops. Then um, introduced animals. So you have to type, type in the, uh, the story about the introduced animals. Remember that guardian alpacas are potential for yonis, but not for CAE. Sheep have the potential to carry CAE. And then there's uh, feral animals, which is not really a problem in Southeast uh, Queensland. Okay, and attached to that is a copy of the vet's notes and the property plan. Now the property plan, you could actually use just a rough line drawing or you can use Google Maps. And with Google Maps, there is, they will show roads. They will show, um, they will show terrain. And you can actually use Google Maps and just use that as an outline for drawing your um, line map. So a rough line drawing is fine. Uh, but you must put in all the roads, all the facilities, your quarantine area, your goat sheds, um, any rivers, that sort of thing. And if you're really good, you can use Google Maps and draw on the Google Maps. So for fencing, um, make sure that you're using um, strainers that are horizontal like this. So two-part strainers and not diagonal strainers because we all know that goats can run up those and jump over the fence. Now, the handling facilities must be suitable to the type of goats. So if you're going to do a whole pile of goats and they're all ferals like this, then you're going to need a, uh, a race and a crush. But if um, you're only using dairy goats, then I like a nice little bolt um, against a solid wall that you can clip a carabiner in and then use the, um, the collars. And that makes life uh, a lot easier. Unfortunately, milking stands don't really work well for collecting blood because you've got to get at the jugular vein, which is in the neck. So here's my video, which is how to collect a blood sample. This video shows taking a blood sample from a goat, which is normally done for testing for CAE and Yoni's disease. So wiping the outside with methylated spirits. With methylated spirits and cotton ball. So the goat's, goat's just tied up so against a solid barrier. I'm 
palpating the area to find the jugular vein. The vacuum container needle is inserted into the holder. The vacuum container is added. So I just juggle it a bit to get the blood. adjusted to part of the nose. Okay, so we like to pre-label all the bottles and we put on the tattoo number or the tag number and that just makes life easier when we're checking the goat's identity. Chloe is sprayed on the area in case any blood is present and may be infectious to other goats. So you must have some signage. Um, you can buy these signs from Animal Health Australia, but don't forget to put in your mobile number um, or you can make a simple sign just like that. So now we come to the um, next compulsory form, which is your document control register. Sounds difficult, but basically it just says where you're saving all your paperwork. Now, remember that you must have the manuals. That's one of the critical points. So they can be saved electronically. Um, so here you've got the date of issue, uh, replaces. Um, in this case, it might re replace the old Biosecurity Queen Queensland scheme document. And you've saved that on your C drive in the AHA directory, for example. The test results, um, you might have those printed off and in a filing cabinet. Remember that the test results from past tests must be provided to the vet uh, at the first visit. Um, or you could have them saved in your emails because the vet will email you the test results uh, and you might save those in the directory in Gmail. It doesn't really matter uh, where you have them so long as you, you have them and you've documented where you've got them. So the property map, if it's a line drawing, it might be in the filing cabinet in your office. The signed vet agreement, again, must be there. So again, because it's signed, it's either going to be a PDF in a C drive somewhere or it's going to be in a filing cabinet. So any questions about document control register? Sounds difficult, um, but it's not really, and it's standard practice. Um, it's the first thing you do at any sort of um, disease outbreak, um, when you're eradicating a disease or a pest, someone gets the, called the document controller, and their job is to register every bit of paper uh, that comes in, in any form. Okay, so this is just something you've got to have and it's pretty easy to do. The next one is the agreement. So you've got to fill out the basic details. So, whoops, so it's just the name, uh, address, where it's got to be dairy goat, um, stud, uh, property name, so your stud name, your breeds and your pick. And then all the things that you agree to. Um, and this is agreement between you and your vet. So you agree to present all the goats over the appropriate page for inspection and testing. You agree to permanently identify them. Um, you agree to submit animals that test positive for follow-up investigation. Remember that you... Um, these are screen, ELISA's are screening tests. So if you do get a, a positive, it may be a false positive, so you need an additional test. If you do get a true positive, then you will either send the goat to slaughter, keep it isolated, uh, is it acceptable as well, or you will sell it with full disclosure. And my advice is to get a goat health statement that lists the positive tests 
and get both parties to sign it and you keep a copy as well as giving a copy to the new purchaser. Okay. Um, you've got to notify the vet within seven days of any suspect cases. Uh, only introduce goats from other herds that are in compliance with the manual. So these are all the things that you declare. Then you and the vet sign it, date it, and the vet and you must also sign Part B, which are the things that the vet agrees to do. So notice the first one. The vet will agree to advise you on the programs and the actions you need to undertake. So this means that the vet has to know and study the manual in great detail and advise you about it. The vet undertakes the initial appraisal, does risk management, clicks and submits the samples, investigates any suspect cases and provides you a copy of all the results, maintain records for examinations and testing, audit your herd in 12, 12 months time and determines the status of your herd and lets the GOAT, that MAP administrator who's in Biosecurity Queensland know. Okay. So the agreement and the VET risk assessments must be completed at the same time or before the blood and milk samples are submitted to the lab. This means you can't use previous test, blood test results. So um, get this vet owner agreement done as soon as you can, because you can't do it in retrospectively. Now this is the form that's only done by the vet. So really you can say, don't need to know about this, but it is quite um, complex. So maybe a vet will need to um, get some advice on this. And I keep a cheat sheet, which I refer to whenever I send this form in. So basically it's your name and address and details, your PIC. LLS stands for Local Land Services. That's applicable in New South Wales, not in Queensland. So just ignore that. Then you tick the box for Biosecurity CAE. Then you get the year that you obtained your status and your current status and your certificate number. And you will get that from the database. And I've been told the database will be up the end of January. So they've got a few days left. Uh, and you, that's where you also get the expiry date and the test due date. Now, if you're in the Biosecurity Queensland CAE scheme, you'll be MN2 for CAE. The annual review date is 12 months from the date of test. You can apply for an exemption, but there shouldn't be any need. You are given a two month leeway. The lab report number is on the top of the, uh, the test result form. So it looks something like P23 for 2023 and then a number. And that's also on the specimen advice sheet. Then the number of animals that are eligible, so that's over three months for CAE. And obviously the number of animals that are eligible and the number of animals test, tested must be the same. Then you tick a box, so for most DGSA members that'll be breeding and you put in your breeds and then the vet uh, signs the forms, dates it, and sends it to the administrator. And the administrators are on the Market Assurance Program uh, website. And in Queensland are Joanne Mullinger and Lawrence Garvey. There's some debate about that, uh, but that should be clarified soon. <coughs> So the next form may never be needed. Um, it's an corrective action and an improvement report. So at the 12-month visit after the, you've joined the scheme, 
when the vet comes back, if they find a problem, they'll do a corrective action and improvement report. So the corrective action um, might be someone escaped um, and therefore you're going to adjust the fence. You're going to replace diagonal strainers with horizontal ones, for example. Um, so what improvement actions will be done? So you're going to tell fencing contractors to only ever use horizontal strainers, use sign and date. So here's an example of a corrected action. Obviously that gate's too loose, goats will squeeze through and under that. So they've just put wire around it. So now these are the elements for the annual review by the vet. And these are the same forms used by any auditor that might come to your property. So there's seven elements, not including uh, record keeping. So these are the herd entry and risk, uh, risk assessment, introduced livestock, movement of assessed animals, livestock identification and herd management plan, testing, and if you are vaccinating for yonis, um, there's a section for that. So record keeping, so this is where your document control register comes in. Um, notice that this one here, you're supposed to do an internal review at least every six months. So it's a good idea to use this form six months. So that's just done with you. It's not done with the vet, but it just goes and reinforces that you need to keep, you know, keep this serious. Um, this is a quality assurance program. You need to do an internal review. So just get your file out in six months' time. I'll send a reminder by email to people that I um, look after to remind them to do that. And um, the proof of that can either be a diary entry where it says sat down and did the forms. It might be one of these forms signed and dated. Um, could be the email where I email you a new email back, yes, I've done the six monthly review. Um, the next one is the property risk assessment. So you've got a copy of the agreement with the debt. Property maps done showing all these things. Records are done. The boundary fences are secure. Stock handling facilities are suitable. Um, you're checked that you don't have any feral animals, etc. Then there's a section on introduced livestock, uh, introduced fender's name, uh, sex, age, earmarks or tags. And remember that under this scheme, you've still got to, um, you've still got to test the animal while it's in quarantine and not let it out until you've got a negative test. So that's a difference between the current scheme which allows you to um, easily just get a goats in from other credited herds without any test. Now, no matter what, you will need a test. So the next one is movement of the assessed animals. So a lot of that's not really applicable because you're not going to be walking goats on stock routes, I'm sure. Uh, there is a section there about shows, and exhibitions. Um, so you need to either only go to shows that have done a venue audit. I've done those in the past um, in Victoria. No one's asked me in Queensland. Um, and where the, and generally what I do is I send an email to the my clients saying this is the recommended procedure if you're going to shows it be um, take your own bedding, take your own water buckets, take your own hay, take your own hay feeders, never let them drink from a communal water trough, just basics. And also at the 12 month visit, we sit down and talk about what shows you're going to go to. So, um, and if you're transporting those, you wouldn't put them on that communal truck. They'd have to be kept separate. 
livestock identification. So you've got seven days to identify them. They should be identified anyway, anyway because goats, if they're moved between properties, must um, be identified. The herd management plan um, is on file. Herd management plans done with your vet. The testing. Um, so you've got all the records there and vaccination, which is only for Yonis. So use that form or there is a checklist on the Animal Health Australia website, which is basically that form. And you use that for the six monthly review. So the goat owner must do the review in between the vet visits. So just sign and date that as proof you've done it. Now, these are the critical defects which lead to immediate suspension until a corrective action uh, report's done and the problem's fixed. So not having a current manual, so make sure you've downloaded the current version before the annual visit. Not having a herd management plan, um, not having a property risk assessment, which the vet will do, falsifying records or refusing to be audited they'll all cause an immediate suspension from the scheme. So, um, so non-compulsory forms, these are an example of non-compulsory forms. So um, use the checklist, which is what I talked about before, before the six month review. So you just tick those and date and sign. There is a boundary inspection report. Um, so here's an example of one I filled out. So after a heavy storm, you might like to go around the boundaries, make sure there's no branches um, down over a fence and you just do that. But you don't have to use the non-compulsory forms. Uh, you can just use an entry in your diary. Now, for those that have forgotten what CAE looks like or have never seen it, I took this um, only a few goes ago, and I'll just show you what CAE does to goats. So obviously deformed legs, poor thing. Uh, so that's what CAE does. Notice how skinny it is too. Now, also in this herd, there are a lot of skinny goats. Um, and so not all goats have big knees, not all goats have deformed legs. Some are just skinny and you can't put any weight on them. So obviously a condition score one there, and you can see all its backbone. And also don't forget about Yoni's disease. So this goat here is Yoni's, just looks like a wormy sarnin. Um, probably seen a lot of those, but it could also be Yoni's. And I'll just mention Yoni's, that we've, we don't have a good blood test for Yoni's. So by the time you get a blood test that's positive, they're excreting high numbers of Yoni's bacteria in the feces. And by the time they show clinical signs, they're literally pumping out millions of Yoni's bacteria. So uh, just put in this, um, so your blood tests are about the same price except currently if you're in the CAE scheme, you're getting them for half price. You can use a blood test, um, same blood sample that you use for CAE. There's a slight risk of a false positive, um, which means that um, you have to follow it up with a um, fecal sample, or you could use pe uh, pooled fecal samples and that cost is a lot higher. So it's $139.25. So it basically works out the same as the blood test. 
the pooled faecal samples unfortunately take four months to get a result. So um, blood tests are better. And of course, you've got the submission fee on top of that. 